You're a cantaloupe. Five long years he wore this watch up his ass. These are my cactuses. I put googly eyes on them. Sometimes when I'm driving, I have this sudden impulse to turn the wheel quickly, head on into the oncoming car. Peter Pan has found a mother. You want me to say what? Like, I don't get it. Is that it? The ice is gonna break! All right. Welcome back to another episode of Walkin' 101, the podcast where we watch every Christopher Walken project in chronological order. Now, that could be movie, television show, play, whatever we can get our hands on. I am Kenny Johnson, documentary filmmaker, editor. I've never seen The Godfather Part Two. that's the fact of the day. Really? Never seen it. I've never seen the third one. Hi, I'm Brandon Hardesty, uh, and I just I feel awkward every time I do this intro because mm-hmm. I feel pressure to come up with something funny. We'll come up with something funny. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah. You can't. I can't. So yeah. now you're just <laughs> I mean, starting off on an incredibly awkward note, but that's okay. That's all right. Uh, we watched. What? Did, yeah. What did we watch today? What was our What was our film? The oh, Sentinel. Sure. It was a 1977 supernatural thriller horror movie right. uh, directed by Michael Winner. Right. And before we get into that. Let's catch up with the host today in a little segment we like to call a walking in our shoes. <laughs> so, so we've officially called the segment. Yes. Walking in our shoes. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. So yeah, we'll start off. Uh, so since our last record, what, what have you been up to? What have you been doing? Well, since our last record, yes. uh, I've been, uh, let's see, I am working on more IMDb videos. My wife and I are actually, we are moving into a house with a big milestone. We're excited. So that's kind of what I've been concentrated on the past week or so. Mm-hmm. We've been uh, we, we are going to close on it sometime in November. The papers are almost all signed, so that's that's been pervading. Where is it? My I don't life. even I don't even know this. Where is yeah, it? it's in. Um, uh, let's see, it's in Parkville. It's close by here. Okay. Um, all right. So you're still around the Baltimore metro area. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's in the county. Okay, cool. Yeah. It's a townhome. So yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much the the big thing that's been going on with us. Just a lot of the taking inventory of what furniture we have and f- thinking about where we're going to put things. And uh, yeah, that's yeah. pretty much it. How well, about con- yourself? Congratulations on the house. Well, thank you. And you have a yes, little bit I, of a milestone yourself. I I got engaged. Yes, you did. Uh, last weekend, it was quite the endeavor, quite the event. Uh, and you gave no hint that this was going to happen. And no, not really to anybody. It was very secretive. W- what would happen was my my uh, I guess my fiance now. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't like calling her that. It's yeah. so weird. It's so <laughs> awkward. We both agree. We had a conversation about that last night. Well, what do we call each other now? And we're like, let's just keep calling each other boyfriend and girlfriend. It's just yeah, yeah, yeah. It just sounds so weird. But anyway, so we had this. We bought the ring a while ago. And we've been wanting to do something special, um, and we just didn't know. Like we didn't. We were like, when, when when should I do it? When should I do it? So I kind of had the idea. I'm like, oh, we both like going to Disney World. It's kind of like a nice little fun thing that we do. It's a nice way to, I don't know. It's a good place to go because our brains are always working on things. We're always doing work. It's a nice little world that you can go to and not have to worry about fucking anything. Yeah. You're in fantasy <laughs> land. Okay. So uh, I decided. You know, I think I was driving home from someplace. I'm like, let's just go to Disney World. And she's like, or I was like, oh, okay. So I planned this whole trip out. We just did it for like a quick overnight thing. We went, you know, to the Magic Kingdom. You know, I popped the question in front of the castle. Right. She kind of knew it was coming. Like she, she, she knew that I was like, oh, let's randomly go to Disney World. She's like, well, what's up? What are you planning? Mm-hmm. So she kind of figured it out. And, but she was still happy and still surprised. Well, now what people don't know about you, right, is that you, and this is something I, I've told you that I admire about you, is that you don't give a shit about no. anybody or anything. No. When you go to a party, you will, you don't feel obligation to even talk to anybody. You no. will sit and just watch television. Yep, I'll do whatever I want. And so when <laughs> when, it, when it comes to you you uh, getting engaged, it was just a thing that it was the, just a thing. It just had to happen, and it's a milestone that you think other people make a big deal out of, but I, I don't care about it at all but i don't care about it because my uh, my girlfriend and i we already we own a house i thought that was a really big milestone us yeah. together we both both names are on the house they're both on the lease yeah you know um so getting engaged it was a bigger thing for her and other people but i don't give a shit you know <laughs> i decided to go to disney world because hey if she's gonna get the ring out of this and get this cool thing then i should be rewarded some type of treat as well <laughs> <laughs> so i decided you know, it, I love that. Mo- some of it was for her. Most of it was for yeah, me. What are you getting out of it? Exactly. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's what we did. Um, 
And it doesn't feel any different. Everyone's like, oh, congratulations. We didn't, when we did it on Saturday, yeah. we didn't want to tell anybody because I wanted to spend the rest of the day going around on rides and having fun and not having to answer my phone. Oh, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, that's true. So. And, and, and when you, when you uh, got down on one knee in front of the Magic Castle, yeah. Um, it, nobody noticed. And nobody you, you noticed. wanted it that way. You didn't want it to exactly. be a spectacle. Yes. We found a, I found a nice secluded area. There was a parade happening. So everyone was focused on that. There's like a little hub area where this little grassy kind of area is. Yeah. And uh, I found a photographer who wasn't doing anything at the time. And I told Amanda. She knew it was coming. Like she knew it was like about to come. I'm like just just fucking sit here for a second i need to figure something out so i like walked around and i found this photographer found a nice little quiet area because both of us we like to live very you know subtle lives we don't want yeah. to be the center of attention mm-hmm. that's why we don't even really like this idea of the wedding because we gotta like stand up there and everyone's gonna be staring at us we, we don't like that yeah, yeah so i tried to find a nice quiet area where the castle was still in the background, you could still see everything. It's still a very nice day, but it wasn't going to be like, oh, I got down on one knee, and people are going to be, oh my god, it's happening! Yeah, you didn't do like a flash mob thing right. where you sing as Gaston or something, right? Or, or no, <laughs> nothing like that. She would have hated it. Now, thinking about that, I probably should have done it because it would have been funny to me. It would have been funny to you. She would have been so embarrassed and mortified. It would have been hysterical to me. But and you know, film it and get it on YouTube, and it would go viral. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. a viral video. I know. Don't you want that? I want that so bad. <laughs> oh, man. Um, yeah. Then that the engagement was the big thing. Um, I, do you want me to tell the other story, the other quick story about how I made fun of the children? And I kind of came to this conclusion. I'm like, maybe I'm not. And I just proposed to my girlfriend. Maybe children... I should wait a little bit to have those. Yeah. Okay, so I'll tell this story. And and before you, I just want to also, right. um, uh, real quick, is my microphone uh, low? Mm. I, I feel like it no, might be No, you're good. Low. Oh, okay, never you're mind. Good. Then it's in my head. Yeah. Uh, sorry, that was awful. You ruined it. Off the rails. Yeah. I, I, I I want people to imagine Kenny as the, the, uh, the version of Larry David that you see in Curb Your Enthusiasm. This is Kenny Johnson... It, aspires to be Larry Day. It's getting scary because it's getting to the point where it's like, I'm not even trying to be that character anymore. It's just naturally happening. Yeah. It's a natural progression. So, you know, and also a little, little full disclosure on this podcast, on this episode, this film that we watched was not very good and there's not much to talk about. So we're going <laughs> to fill some time here. We're going to fill yeah. some time with some stories yeah. about stretch. us. Stretch. We're going to stretch. stretch in it. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah. We did the engagement last yeah. weekend, and then uh, on Friday, you know, it's been a week since. And, you know, we're thinking about marriage. We're thinking about the future. Of course, she's thinking about children and all this stuff. And, I'm, uh, you know, I like the idea of having kids, but probably not anytime soon. Mm-hmm. So, anyway, we're, I'm at this comic book shop. My uh, friend it works there. Every Friday night, I go hang out with him. I mean, there's really not much to do at the comic shop. They have this uh, a magic tournament, you know, the card game yeah, magic. The gathering, yeah. So they, they do that in the back of the shop. So both my friend uh, Fontaine and I, you know, we kind of stand in, in the front of the shop, and he stands behind the counter, and he doesn't really do much, and we're just talking about stuff, reading comics, talking, whatever. Um, uh, one of the, the people in the, the, the magic, the gathering tournament game, uh, I think they brought their their children, and it was a little maybe five six year old daughter, and then a four year old boy, and they are running in and out of the store, and they have like this little travel case with them, like a little uh, like a little rolling suitcase. Right, so now, they're, they're just like playing a game, running back and forth. I don't know what they're doing, and the store is a, it's a very small spot that we're in. It's a very narrow section. It's like a very narrow tight hallway because there's the, all the stands with the comics and toys, and there's a glass counter. Mm-hmm. Fontaine's behind the counter. I'm in the middle. And then there's the front door. So it's a very narrow section. And you, I always have to like kind of like awkwardly move out of the way if somebody is walking in and out. Yeah. So I'm standing up at the counter. And um, the little girl runs up to Fontaine and hands him a sticker. And she says, oh, this is for you. Thanks for, you know, I, I don't know. We're running in and out. We don't mean to. But, you know, we want to give you a sticker. And then she hands huh. a sticker That's also. Cute. Yeah, it's, it's adorable. Yeah. She hands a sticker to uh, the guy hosting the tournament as well. And says, here's a sticker for you. And then after a couple of minutes, uh, the little boy walks up and he hands me a piece of paper or a sticker or something. Oh, this is for you. And the little girl's like, no, it's not for him. It's for the other one. It's for Fontaine. And I was like, oh, well, he already got one. And even if you did, even if you would have given that to me, I would have thrown it away. (laughs) Did you say that? I did say that. (laughs) I did say that right to the little girl. So some, some, some time has passed. Some time has passed. 
I love it. And uh, once again, narrow section, right? Narrow section, right? Yeah. Up to the front of the door. I, um, I'm standing by the counter, and I kind of lean back. I literally just take one step back, and the little boy is running, and he kind of tries to s- squeeze in between me and the and the case, and I accidentally bump him right on the backside of my butt, basically. Yeah. Knock him over, bam, right on the ground. After a minute or so, all of a sudden, I was like, oh, are you okay, little kid? And then he just immediately starts crying. And the sister back of the store comes running up and like uh, this look of dear god what did you do oh my god i think he murdered my little brother yeah and he's crying eventually the father comes over picks the little boy up and you know he's perfectly understanding and he's like oh you know what what, what happened what happened and the little girl says he knocked him over Ooh, and i'm like she has it out for you she did and i was like you little fucking bitch <laughs> I was furious at this point. So I explained, yeah, to the father. Oh, you know, it's just an accident. And he understood. He's like, it's a four-year-old boy. He barely knows how to walk yet. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's okay. No big worry. Um, Eventually, the boy stops crying. Like, an instant after his father picks him up and he runs back outside. (laughs) So the whole rest of the night, I'm just furious i'm like this little fucking girl man and uh, and my friend fontaine's like just just relax okay like literally <laughs> fontaine's like the only thing i hear in my head when you're saying this is the curb your enthusiasm theme <laughs> he's like calm down larry david i'm just like man this brat like i can't believe it she didn't give me the sticker you know she accused me of knocking her brother over larry, just threw me under the bus larry yeah. why would you do that exactly larry she's just a little girl and and you know it's it wasn't right in my eyes. It wasn't right. Oh, All right. Man. So that, that concludes the rant of our lives. I could see you balding before me. God. You're going to start Got wearing glasses. Uh, start wearing what? Like his tennis shoes his and blazer. The, and his blazers. Oh, God. It's going to happen. It's going to happen eventually. Everybody sees it. <laughs> All right. So All right. The, the down and the dirty. The down and dirty plot synopsis of the Sentinel. Okay, let's just quick little. What is it? It's a. It, it's a. It's this woman. She moves into a Brooklyn apartment, yep. and really strange things happen. You don't. You're not. There are creepy neighbors. Yep. Uh, you find out eventually that this whole apartment complex with all these kind of odd neighbors in it is a gateway to hell. Mm-hmm. And there's a recluse priest that 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 lives in the on the top floor yep. who acts as the sentinel. Right. He is the one who's guarding this gateway to hell and preventing, I guess, the demons from spilling into our mortal world. I guess. And we had to look that up on Wikipedia yeah. because halfway through the movie, which felt like three and a half hours, yeah, this is the second time I've had to go lay on the floor for a certain amount of time because yep. it was exhausting to watch. Yeah, this this movie. Let's dig a little bit deeper here. This okay. this movie really was. It was just a bunch of really weird scenes. Yep. that took forever to get to the point, and then when it got to the point, you're like. Okay, I guess it was you know. There's so many subplots. There's so many weird subplots at one point because the 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 main character is this young, attractive. She's a model. Mm-hmm. You know, she she doesn't want to get married to her boyfriend, and he's this high powered attorney, and he's like, you know, just marry me. And she's like, no, I want my own place. I'm gonna get my own place. I'm an independent woman. So she gets her own place, and it's 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 the apartment building is filled with these creepy tenants, and they're really yeah. weird characters. Uh, you got Burgess Meredith playing a, an old uh, like man with with a pet cat and a bird, and he's, right. a, he's a little eccentric and invites himself in. Yes, and, and then and he's great. I love Burgess he's Meredith. fantastic. He's absolutely fantastic in this movie. And then there's also these two uh, women. One is played by um, uh, the vacation the, uh, mom, mother. Beverly D'Angelo. Yes, so she she is this silent. I don't know what she is. They she lives with this other kind of vivacious woman and uh beverly d'angelo starts masturbating in front of uh, oh, the main yeah. character this was like maybe the second really creepy scene so you know we have our main character moving into this apartment complex right and then strange things begin happening very unsettling weird things and one of the things is she goes and she visits two of her neighbors who are just uh ballerinas I they, they're just dressed like they're that. just dressed like ballerinas and they fondle each other and they fondle each other when she asks them what you know what do you do for for all, for a living she goes we fondle each other and then she just squeezes beverly d'angelo's tit yep. and so at one point uh the one who is not beverly d'angelo leaves the room and our main character tries to strike up a conversation with beverly d'angelo who then just begins masturbating through her leotard yep. to orgasm and then 
the woman comes back in like you know nothing happens so very unsettling a lot of them like when you look at them isolated they really are jarring creepy scenes yeah yeah like i was really there there were scenes in this movie i'm like oh holy shit i've never seen that before right but it was it wasn't i think the general consensus even when we were looking at reviews is like none of this was put together in a cohesive manner and it's just a bunch of kind of random events and i have to look at it at the time Right, this was, what was it, 70? 77. 77, so this mm-hmm. is after The Exorcist, after The Omen, after Rosemary's Baby. Yeah. They're trying to capitalize on this weird religious horror film. And that's yep. then the, that's what the whole movie then starts to be about. At that point, you know, he, she meets the weird neighbors. Mm-hmm. She goes back and she talks to the landlady, played by Ava Gardner. Yeah. <laughs> and and Ava Gardner's like no one's been living in the building for for 40 years. And that's like 35 minutes into the movie and we're like, "Oh, okay, now it finally makes sense." Yeah, like that setup. You know, a movie can take a while to set up and still be interesting. It, it, like it, I watched I rewatched The Godfather the other day. Right. And there's a good maybe 30 40 minutes of setup like right up to the point where the horse's head is found in the guy's bed. It's like that's all set up. Right. But it it you know, it it all felt it, it, I didn't feel bored at all or exhausted. No. This this took a long time because I think it was like it set up things and then it repeated yes. things that it had already set up. Like, okay, we know. It's creepy. We know the husband wants to marry her. We know, we know, we know. Right. And then it finally got around to it. And then by then we just weren't. We, very... were, we're, we weren't really invested. Yeah. And then finally. Finally. Christopher Walken pops in maybe 40 minutes into the movie. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. He plays the detective. Yep. Who is, I guess, investigating. Well, I don't really even know. He didn't. He he was just. A, he was a detective. Yeah. He he and Eli Wallach, the, the the ugly from the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they are detectives. They kind of have it out for the main character. What is her name? It's Christina. Christina Rains. Very very pretty, attractive girl. Right. Um, she, her husband to be, or her boyfriend is Chris, uh, what, what is it? Uh, Chris Sarandon. Sarandon, yeah. Chris Who Sar- was nominated for an Oscar. Right. His first film, uh, for- I believe, was uh, Dog Day Afternoon. He played Leon, the, yeah, the love, love interest. Of Al Pacino's character. Correct. Yeah. And very good actor, but very flat in this movie. He, he was this lawyer. Um, his okay, and this is this is once again going back to this movie had all these subplots that were like, what the hell's going on? Yeah, um, the the lawyer, um, he had a wife who committed suicide, and these detectives, um, thought that maybe he had a hand in it, yeah. and uh, so now all of a sudden his new girlfriend Christina Rains is kind of acting crazy, and is like, whoa, what's going on here? You know, Mm -hmm. is this lawyer guy up to something again? Because we found this dead body and it could be maybe the girlfriend did it because at one point and this is when the movie finally starts to enter that supernatural element. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, you have all these great elements. You have uh, Christina Raines. She wakes up in the middle of the night. She hears somebody upstairs walking back and forth, hitting these metal something. So, you know, that's that's a scary moment, right? Mm-hmm. Alone. She's alone. She he grabs a knife and she, like, you know, goes upstairs and she's got the flashlight and it's creepy. And then all of a sudden, oh, there's a cat. The cat. Uh, and it's eating a bird. And you're like, oh, it's, it's kind of getting creepy now. And she's yeah. like, going into this room. And there's a legit moment that both of us are like, wow, it's a really creepy moment. Yeah. She walks into this room. And it's it's a wide shot, and she's like looking around. She's moving the flashlight across the room, and there's nothing there. And then all of a sudden, she stops, and the door next to her opens, and a creepy long figure, white figure, just walks really fastly across the room. You're like, whoa, what yeah, was that? Speed walks, and you're like, whoa, that was creepy. And then she, of course, goes over to it, like in all good horror films. What are you doing? What's going on? Yeah, yeah. Who are you? <laughs> and it's the ghost of her dead father, and he's all zombified, and he's creepy and he's got white shit on him and she stabs him and there's blood all over the place she rips off his nose and stabs his eye it's like a really gory unnecessary gory scene (laughs) she comes running out of the apartment covered in blood turns out it's her own blood Mm -hmm. everyone starts saying well there's something wrong with this girl because also at the same time she had like some migraine issues so it's like we don't it's a mess what they were trying to do with some of this was really that that paranoid awful in your gut feeling you felt when you watched rosemary's baby yeah 
and how it like the more people she talks to, the more she feels and the more you feel as a viewer that everybody's against her. There's some kind of weird conspiracy. She can't trust anybody. And right. she starts just going crazy. And maybe she is crazy. Maybe she's not. Maybe there's some real shit going on there. I felt like they were trying for some of that in this, but there was either too much going on or the actress wasn't really very good she's either. N- yeah. She's not very I, good. I wasn't along for the journey. Whenever you watch a movie where someone is getting creeped out by shit, uh, you know, you gotta, you gotta feel sorry for him. Yeah, you have to feel, you have to feel sympathy for those characters, and I, we didn't really care that much for her. Yeah, um, it wasn't like watching Mia Farrow or Ellen Burstein in The Exorcist. Really, right. it was just right, very flat, very one note. And I felt like it had some cool elements because yeah, then when you start to find out, you're like, oh, um, the tenants that she is apparently talking to that no one else can see or no one else can find. Uh, they're all former murderers or former just weird ass fucking people, and you're like, oh, that's some that's some good horror elements right there. She's trapped in this apartment with other creepy, spooky specters, yeah, that are former murderers and um, you know, God knows what else. And uh, but it just never really linked together. Just they, it just was just so awkward at times and slow and mm-hmm. weird and uh, you know. It, and the whole time, you know, once again, this is the podcast about Christopher Walken. So we kept trying to find, we're like, okay, here's Christopher Walken. Here, he's back on screen. Yeah. He's back on screen. He's there. Uh, but he's not. He said maybe, maybe three lines in this whole movie. And uh, Jeff Goldblum, also in this movie. <laughs> yes. Severely underutilized. Yeah. You know, that it didn't, it didn't feel any of the Jeff Goldbluminess. Nope, there's nothing. I mean, there's absolutely nothing to say about Walken's performance in this because there's I mean, he was he, he was good. I he mean, was, you could they, say that he, he was. I, I I didn't even know. I mean, he was just there in the background. Rebecca and Malcolm Stinnett, Gerda Engstrom, Emma and Lillian Klotkin, Anna Clark, all people the Parker girl said she met. All killers, all dead. She went to a party with eight dead murderers. Doesn't everybody? It could have been played by an actor with no previous credits and would have been fine. Or they could have eliminated that character completely and just had Eli Wallach. There was no reason for that character to exist. And I tried to look things up uh, about this movie in interviews with Christopher Walken or anything that mentioned Walken. The only thing I found was an interview that was on comingsoon.net. Mm-hmm. And it was an interview by, I believe, Chris Alexander sometime in 2012. Mm -hmm. And he was... uh, Uh, They interviewed the director. He goes, for your male lead, you had Chris Sarandon, who at the time was at his peak of career because he was just in Dog the Afternoon. Was he your first choice? And the director, Michael Winter, said, oh, no, I should have had Christopher Walken in the lead instead Mm. of the small part he ended up playing. But it was Universal that wanted to have Chris in the role. They Really? Just a side note, that seems odd. Because of what we saw, there was there that was such a small character that Universal was like, "Yeah, we need Walken in this three line detective role." That seems there's so, so bizarre. many other roles. Well, not really. There's not many other roles that he could have done. Really, that he would have been great in this lead role. Yeah, as the as the boyfriend, he would have been good because the the boyfriend was supposed to kind of be you were. He's supposed to be the supporting figure, but also he was really pushy about getting married. Mm-hmm. And then you find out he's got this dark past with his wife committing suicide. And you're like, man, Walken could have had some fun with that because he could have, he plays the charm, mm-hmm. but he also could play that asshole, that yeah. like underlying asshole. He's got a dark secret, you know? Definitely. That would have been perfect in this role. But like, and, and, and in the end, Chris Sarandon's character uh, tries to kill the uh, a recluse priest that lives on the, the the top floor. Right. And he dies, and he sort of becomes this specter demon and has this moment that could have been a lot better, where he's walking towards our main character. You know, she's frightened because it looks like it's her boyfriend, but it's not really. Yeah. And he goes, you know, I was killed by the priest and I am now one with the Legion. Right. And then he turns and the side of his face is all bloodied up and like something like that. Christopher Walken could have had a lot of oh, man. fun with that. I he believe. would have been great in it. Um, and then the final scene is she becomes a priest to keep the demons out. And the demons are a bunch of just... It was kind of actually kind of creepy because I think they actually did get some people with honest 
deformities, some type of yeah. ailments on them. They had like, you know, these giant kind of like, I don't know, like tumor or something. They're like all just all disfigured in some weird way. I think they even yeah. hired some, maybe a little bit of like the, the circus performers mm-hmm. that, um, you know, the uh, they don't have like the lower to- torso type of things. It was very creepy. Like all these these figures started popping out. The main character and she's like running up the stairs. What do I do? What do yeah, I do? And be like these demons like crawling out of hell and they're all just like reaching for her. And then, so there there was a cool sequence in the end. Uh, definitely with that. Yeah, and but then she becomes the new sentinel. She becomes the new sentinel. Sure, why not? <laughs> sure, why not? Uh, the director of this. Winner? Yeah, Michael Winner is a what a British guy, right? British guy did a lot of BBC stuff. Eventually, did uh, best known for Death Wish. Yeah, and this is after Death Wish, so he started doing more action genre specific films. All right. Um, so, the, uh, the cast in this this movie was insane. So many people we recognized, especially from movies that we had that we've watched on this podcast. Yes, uh, Martin Balsam. Yeah, Martin Balsam, who was the what the juror in Twelve Angry Men, but was also the he was in the Anderson tapes. He played one of the caper yes. dudes. He was the the effeminate uh, gay man, the yeah. over the top <laughs> caricature of a gay man. Yeah, uh, uh, art collector. Yeah, he was he was in this movie as well. So that's a nice little connection. And uh, mm-hmm. you said Jeff Goldblum, and you know there once again the walk and Goldblum connection. Yep. Um, <laughs> Uh, so got, Jerry Orbach. Yeah, Jerry Orbach of Law and Order. Yep, he was he, the uh, he was the asshole director. At one point, he was directing a scene <laughs> with um, uh, the main character. She's a model. She's supposed to be like planting the the wine glass down, and he she's not doing it right. And he yells at her. Oh, He's like you know. immediately impatient with right. her. <laughs> Yeah, he was uh, good. Burgess Meredith, which you, you you said he was great in this movie, just a creepy weird old dude. Yeah, which I, I think I think he was at probably a, a demon in real life. <laughs> <laughs> this, was, yep. this was no stretch for him. He's fucking, especially in if you've ever seen him in any Twilight Zone episodes, he was always fantastic. Oh always god, gave off a nice creepy vibe. Jose Ferreira, who oh. is Miguel Ferreira's father. Yep, had the same nose. <laughs> the same nose. That's that's what you pointed out. We're like, that's got to be his father. There he is. That, there's the Ferrera nose. Play, played the played a priest in this. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah, just a lot of cool little character actors, actors, actors that you see in this movie. Oh, uh, there was one guy. Oh, oh man, I forget his name. He was a uh, William Hickory. W- William Hickey. Hickey. Yeah, Hickey. I know. I know him from like he was in Christmas Vacation and and Mouse Hunt. But I know he was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually really looking forward to watching Mouse. Like, <laughs> I watched that movie. Have you seen it? This is, I haven't seen it since like a little kid. But same here. It's fantastic. I really love it. But he was in that, and he was. Uh, he I think he was nominated for an Oscar for uh, like a mob movie. Yeah, like a Godfather esque yep. movie. Uh, so yeah, great cast. But great uh, cast totally wasted. Yeah. Fin- final thoughts on this movie. I mean, we kind of laid it out a little bit. Uh, you know, my final thoughts was I. I I absolutely hated this movie. <laughs> I know you absolutely. <laughs> I remember last podcast you had said, "Oh, this is what we're watching next," and I was just like, "Ugh!" <laughs> and I, I stand by that statement. I stand by that statement. It was a total waste. Um, you know, I spent a majority of the film kind of googling the other actors that were in this movie. <laughs> I was like, "Oh, holy crap, he was in this movie!" And I'm like looking him up. Like, oh, that's what he's from, and you know. It, it, you know, I missed a good portion of it when um, when the boyfriend figures out, you know, oh, this is what's happening in the apartment. The ghosts are going to do this. And I was yeah. like, wait, what happened? I, I, I was paying attention and I was on the same page as you. So yeah. no, don't worry about it. Oh, God. So, yeah, it was don't don't bother. Don't bother with this movie. Do not bother. <laughs> Stay away from it. Awful. Well, what's your final thoughts on it? <laughs> when I uh, when I saw what we were going to watch today, I was very excited because mm-hmm. it was just it, it's a, a little change of a change of pace it was like yep. ooh, this looks like kind of a gory interesting maybe cultish uh horror movie um I, I so i went into it with with expectations and really the, the thing about going into something with good expectations is you'll either you'll either be correct or it'll be a miserable experience yeah. so it's always best to go in with low expectations like you did and yep. i should have done that this was a really exhausting movie, and it's interesting when I always find it interesting how time can move 
slowly oh when watching God. a movie and it just fe- it feels long watching it because there's so many things to think about so yep. many subplots and we paused at one point no we didn't we, 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 we just, just checked the time checked of the, the movie time and it was thir- we, we checked like see how long it took to set everything up it was like a 37 minute mark like, uh, holy shit only 37 minutes have gone by yeah it was so, it was painful and we can't even really cr- critique or comment or say anything about Christopher Walken in this movie because you might as well not have been in this movie. It's it yeah. was simply just there. And apparently Universal insisted he play this part with three or four lines. Like why? Why he could have played the other lead detective. Yeah. You know, he could I mean just yeah. imagine a universal executive behind a desk with like a big like cigar in his mouth like ah Walken, he's playing this role. We I'm gotta get you. we gotta get Walken in the picture, see? Yeah. He's gonna make or break it. He's got four lines. Oh my god! It's crucial. Uh, I wonder if anything was cut out of this film. I'm sure it was an hour and twenty six, and it seemed like oh, it was only an hour and twenty six. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good lord! Yeah. It felt like it felt like two hours. It felt so long. I'm 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 exhausted after that movie. Yeah, and, oh, I'm pretty beat. Uh, Man, uh, miserable. And going back to uh, what the director said about the lead role, how mm-hmm. he he wanted to have Chris in the role, but Universal wanted Chris in the smaller role. Right. Uh, he goes on to say in the interview, I actually offered the part to Martin Sheen. Uh-huh. But to my surprise, the studio said, we don't want Sheen. He's in television. Ridiculous. <laughs> that was... That was, that was <laughs> oh, man. Who who was the studio that made this movie? I'm just curious. I just, I'm assuming Universal because it's that's yeah, who, it's Universal. Yeah, and it made four million dollars when its budget was maybe like three and a half. It said on Wikipedia. Maybe yeah. I mean that sounds like a hit. It probably a bunch of people watched this shit back in the day and be like, oh, that was pretty good. Yeah, that was pretty good. <laughs> oh, that's pretty scary. Pretty creepy. Yeah, did you see creepy Pro- You know, probably not as creepy to us. In today's standards, but you know, I don't, I don't care about like a horror film like that. Just make it, just make a a decent film that keeps my interest mm-hmm. and attention. You had the elements, you had the elements there. Yeah. So you know, just don't, don't fuck around with me. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> yeah, this is pretty bad. All right. So, what's next? What's next? I believe it is an episode of Kojak. <laughs> at least it'll be a short one it'll, I bet it's an hour long yeah but it's like, just one he's in one episode just one episode he plays yeah. Ben Wiley if he did play a recurring character that'd be interesting we'd have to watch like a whole season of- no <laughs> I'm not gonna watch a whole season of Kojak I mean we will but I, it's not interesting it's not gonna be fun it's gonna be fucking Ko- I don't think I've ever seen an episode of Kojak like through <laughs> watch an entire one through you know I've seen clips here and there and when people are talking about it, but yeah, no, he's only in one episode, and and luckily for us, he, he's never done like a series regular on a show. It looks like and it's then, always. Just... And then after that, it's we start getting into the the craziness, the Annie Hall. Yeah, baby, I'm looking. For, oh, I'm so looking forward yep. to seeing Annie Hall again. It's been a while. Deer Hunter, uh, weird pennies from heaven. Mm-hmm. Pennies from heaven. The weird. Dead Zone. The Dead Zone. Yeah, a view to even... a kill at close range. We're getting into some. Good fucking movies. Pennies from wait, that's a Steve Martin movie. Um, is that a comedy? Is that the one with Rick Moranis in it? No, Pennies from no, it's yeah, Steve Martin, but not not Rick Moranis. I'm thinking of something else. It looks like him and Bernadette Peters, fresh off The Jerk, maybe. Huh, that's a drama musical romance. Interesting. What? I've ne- How I've never heard of this movie. <laughs> that's that's actually not too far away from. Yeah, I, I'm looking forward to seeing this other movie, Roseland, which is uh, looks like a uh, a romance with hmm. Christopher Walken and. Oh, is that Streep? Not Streep. Oh, I wish that'd be awesome. It's him and oh man, I I can't see who the the lead actress is, but uh, it's a romance. Looks like with hmm. him, uh, him as the lead. Heaven's Gate, that's another one that looks interesting. That's got Chris Christopherson. Oh, okay. John Hurt. It's, uh, looks like 80. Oh, the man. Year. I'm so, I, I think, I'm, we're not even going to see it until probably seven months from now, but I'm so looking forward to Communion. The one where he's the, uh, oh. where he gets abducted by aliens. 
Oh, I don't think I've ever seen oh, that. Oh, God damn. I'm so excited to see that with you. Is that <laughs> You've got to see and it. And that's full Christopher Walken in star mode. He is... This is like, they, they, they cast him in this movie, and it seems, it seems to me like, okay, you just... Just, just, he's a genius. Just let him do what he wants. Just, just let him go hog wild. That's, that's when you get walking off a leash. Yeah. <laughs> you know you're in for a good podcast right there. Walking off the leash. Yep, that's a good one. Walking off the leash. <laughs> oh man, yeah, yeah. So we got some good, uh, we got some good things coming up here. We do, we do. These, this past couple ones have been kind of hit and miss. You mm-hmm. know, um, the happiness cage. No, no, oh, no. That was awful. Next stop, Greenwich Village. Next stop, Greenwich Village was the yeah. first decent, like yeah, that was his first like walk-in kind of. I could see, I could see flashes of walk-in. Yeah, finally. and like it was like the first kind of decently well-made right. movie we watched, and the fullest character we've seen so far. Right, I think from walk-in. No, I mean I'm looking forward to seeing Annie Hall again. You know, watch an episode of Kojak won't be as bad. Yeah, Annie Hall. I haven't seen Annie Hall in so many, so many years. It'll be <sighs> interesting to see. Again, see, see, see how I how I think about it now because I remember watching it as a young kid, being like, "Oh, this is really funny. This is really cool." And yeah, but now it's like, "All right, what what, what has my taste in movies changed?" Well, we'll see. We'll see. You got to <laughs> tune in to find out. All right, that about does it for this episode. A very special thank you to Render Perfect Productions for lending us some base equipment to make and record this podcast. Here's a little plug for them. Render Perfect Productions is an award-winning Baltimore-based video production and video marketing agency specializing in creating engaging visual content and interactive user experiences. For more info, go to myrender.com. Kind of like our first official sponsor for the show. And speaking of which, if you want to help Brandon and I continue making this podcast, please visit our Patreon page. It's patreon.com slash walkin101. We got a lot of great rewards, and anything you can help contribute to the show would greatly be appreciated. And you like this song in the background we use? This is by David Siste. And if you want, check out more of his music on freemusicarchive.org. And finally, make sure you check out our website, Walkin 101, for more info and updates. And subscribe to us on iTunes. Yes, iTunes. They actually let us put this podcast on iTunes somehow. And as always... Thanks for walking with us.